Welcome to lesson 5 in this beginning scratch video series. Before you get started with this video, make sure that you have a drawn maze and player movement using the arrow keys. If you do not have any of these things on the list, then please refer to the previous video for beginning scratch lesson 4. With that said, let's get started. Today, we are going to be continuing our maze game by implementing wall collisions, enemies, and keys. To code our maze, we're going to start with looking at the walls. We want to make sure that our sprite is always going to be within these walls. So we're going to use if statements to check if our sprite is touching a color. If it's touching the color black, for instance, then we want to make our sprite lose a life. We will do this by making a variable called lives, and we will make it decrement by one or subtract one from it every time the sprite touches a wall. Please pause the video and take some time to try and code this on your own. If you're having trouble, go forward in this video by a few seconds and check our answer. Here's a potential answer for what your code could look like. All of this code is going to be inside of our sprite. First, we're going to make our sprite go to a certain position on the screen. Then we're going to set our sprite's lives to some number. And we will use several if statements to check for the previous conditions that I mentioned. There, there are a few conditions that we need to account for. First, we need to check if the sprite is touching a wall. We can do this by check if the sprite is touching a certain color. For instance, we know that we drew our maze with the walls as black. So if our sprite is touching the color black, then that means it's touching a wall. When a sprite touches a wall, we want to change the lives by negative one, so that would be subtracting one from the lives. And we want to make the sprite go back to the start of the maze and try again. Now, what would happen if we are at the destination or our final endpoint? Earlier, we made this the color green. So we want to check if the sprite is touching the color green. If it is, then we are going to say that we won. And we are going to stop the game. But what if we run out of lives? What if we keep on touching the wall and we don't get to the end? Then we want to check if the lives is equal to zero. If it is, then that means we unfortunately lost the game and we want to end the game here. Please take a moment to try out your game and see if it works. If it doesn't, come back to this video and review this code and see if there's anything that you may have missed or need to add. In our maze game, there will be three keys that the player will need to collect before they can win. These keys will appear one by one. Make sure that these keys are three different sprites. So what you will do is you will create three sprites and each of them will be identical. Each of them will be a key. And then we will add a sprite that blocks the finish line until all of the keys are collected. Let's break this down if this is a little bit confusing. First, let's talk about how we might make something disappear. So just like coding the walls, we're going to use sensing blocks to check if the sprite is touching a key, and then we will use a variable to count the keys. So we will have three different sprites, the first key, the second key, and the third key. Our first key will be visible immediately. As you can see, once the run button is clicked, we will immediately show this key, and it will be placed at a specific location. Then we want to check if this key is touching our sprite. If it is, 
we're going to change this variable called keys left by negative one. So again, we would subtract one from keys left. The keys left variable is going to be used by us to know how many keys the player has left to collect. So in this case, we have three keys left to collect for the first key. We have two keys left for the second key and only one key left for the third key to appear. If the player touches the first key, then we are going to hide it and change the keys left by negative one. Now what this is going to do is this is going to come to our second key. In our second key, we want to initially hide it because we only want the player to see one key at a time. We're going to again put it at a certain position and we're only going to show our second key if the keys left is equal to two. And the reason being is because the only time keys left is equal to two is after our player has touched its first key. And once the second key is visible, we want to check if the player is touching this key. If it is, we're going to follow a similar process where we decrement the number of keys left and we hide this second key. Now we're going to go to our first key. Our first key also starts hidden because we only want it to appear after the second key has been collected. It's also going to be placed at a different end position. And if you notice, instead of having an if statement for checking if the keys left is two, we're going to check if there's only one key left to collect. And the only time that this would happen is if the player has successfully collected the second. Once the player has collected the second key, we will show the third key. And then we will check if the player is touching this key. If it is, we're going to do our final keys left to change by negative one, and we're going to hide the third key. Now, once all of these keys are collected, our keys left variable will have zero. And now the player will be able to get to the finish line. So there's going to be a wall. This will be a sprite that blocks your finish line. This wall will initially be visible and the player won't be able to get past this wall. The only time that the player can get past this wall is when the keys left is zero, in which case we will make this wall disappear. A way that we can make the game more complicated and fun for the player is by adding in enemies. Now these enemies will chase the player around. And if the player touches this enemy, then the player will also lose. So in this code here, we see we have an enemy, Frank. Now this is in a separate sprite. Frank will start at a certain position and it's going to move 0.5 steps towards the octopus every single time we loop. And if touch our octopus, which is our main character, then our character will lose a life and the sprite will reset back to its original position and repeat this process all over again. Please pause this video and give this a try. When you're ready, come back and we will cover some. When you're ready, come back and we'll do some quick recap for this lesson. Ready to come back? Before we end this lesson, here's some extra challenges that you could do. First, you could try moving your barrier sprite back and forth. Or you can try creating a new costume for the player and switch the costume whenever space is pressed. There are many things that you could do to make this game much more fun for your players, so try to be creative. Thank you so much for watching this video in this beginning Scratch series. Please be sure to stick around and watch our next video where we'll continue our project, wrap it up, 
and do some very basic scratch review to see how much you've learned through this video series. Again, thank you for watching and see you soon!